The Sorcerer's Apprentice by Judith French, based on the poem by Goethe, with Paul Rees as the Hexenmeister. <laughs> Are you down there? Oh, galoshes. Peter, come here. So gleich. Yes, sir. In a minute. No, not on my robes. Go away. Go away. How did the browsing go, sir? Dousing, you blockhead. Dousing. I was looking for water, not a library book. Oh. Unsuccessfully. I must change my rod. Frau Flegelhaft needs another charm for her wart. Where is the gazelle dung? There were two boxes this morning, the finest kind, imported from Africa. You will find them or pay for them yourself. Oh, Sturm und Drang! What a day! Now I address the East Pomeranian conjuration of wizards in precisely one hour, when I shall give my long-awaited paper on the phenomenon of automatic writing. Really, sir? What will we say? How would I know, you fool? It hasn't written itself yet. If it is well received, I shall be invited to stand for the office of High Warlock. So... It is of the utmost importance that I arrive in a state of spiritual receptivity. What is this? Hmm? The game of Emperor Charlemagne? Fun for all the family. I made it up, sir. I thought we might sell it here in the shop. It's like chess, but I've updated it so it's relevant to modern times. You play it on this map of the Holy Roman Empire and you choose whether you want to be the Goths, the Visigoths, the Franks or the Berbers. And the object... And is these? Is... What are these? Glow-in-the-dark pyjamas, sir. Hmm? I use phosphorus for those. What you do is you place them near a light, like this lantern, for about an hour and then... And put them you... away at once. Are you mad? This is an alchemical laboratory for the development of magical artefacts and automata, not a penny bazaar. I know, sir. But it's Christmas, and I think we're losing a chance here. People oh, want... Christmas, Christmas! A license for stupidity and excess. The streets are choked with puppet shows, tumblers, organ grinders, everywhere people eating stall and drinking schnapps, squandering their wages on trash, embracing each other. Twelve stone three. Peter, have you been meddling with the clock again? Me, sir? No, sir. When I left this morning, it was telling the time. Frida must have changed the setting, sir. And what age is Frida? Uh, six years old, sir. Six years old, precisely. So she is hardly capable of... Do you know, Peter, I have just noticed what an interesting appearance you present. Sir? Kindly explain what you are holding. Oh, in my hand, you mean? Assuredly. It's a broom, sir. Of course it's a broom, you stupid English peasant. Let me rephrase. You have a broom in your hand. Why? I was just sweeping up, sir. Getting the place spick and span for Christmas. Remarkable. You have been in my employ for a whole year, and I have never seen you clean anything. I had put you down for a lazy, shirking little tapeworm. Mm. Would you care to show me where you have been sweeping? Behind the counter, sir. Oh, behind the counter? Yes, sir. Here, you mean? Yes, sir. Where the dust is so thick I could write my doctorate in it. Well... And the number of cobwebs is causing the spiders to complain of overcrowding. I must have missed a bit. You have most certainly missed a bit, you British mutton head. You have omitted to mention my copy of spells high and low lying open on the counter. And you have neglected to explain why you are wearing my most powerful magic talisman. The seal of Solomon around your neck. Oh, galoshes. You know that even to touch the seal, unless under my supervision, is punishable with instant dismissal. Pack your bags. But, sir... You are not an apprentice, you're a disaster. In the time you have been here, you have learned nothing. Your brain, such as it is, has been devoted to tricks and gimmickry. And even at these, you are a failure. I, the most eminent sorcerer in the whole of Storkopf, have had to clear up after your mistakes. There was the small matter of your setting the shop on fire. They were good fireworks, sir. I just need to Then check. there was the trifling affair of Herr Hopfenstanger's love filter, well. for which I foolishly allowed you to weigh the ingredients thus nearly landing myself in the law courts after he was found running naked through the streets, shouting, Pop goes the weasel! And, of course, 
there was the minor incident of Frau Druckfehler's poodle. And you're thinking it would be amusing to creep up behind it and pretend to be a Rottweiler. I didn't know it had a heart condition, sir. That little prank cost me my best customer. It cost me so much money that I am still having to deduct it from your wages. Your mind is a cesspool of deceit and skullduggery. You did not pick up that broom in order to sweep the floor. You were trying to make it fly, weren't you? Yes, sir. Would you care to explain why? It's the stroke of our new Christmas frenzy in the marketplace tonight. I thought it would be sort of cool to arrive in the broom. My seal of Solomon, if you please. Yes, sir. It goes back into the purse of Fortunatus where it belongs. Now, pack your bags. Yes, sir. When I return from the conjuration of wizards, you will be gone, is that clear? Now, I'm already late. Goodbye. Well, sir. Yes? Merry Christmas, sir. What is this? Your Christmas present, sir. Hmm. A lump of clay and a cabbage. Yes, sir. It's a charm to eliminate chaos from your life. I've adapted it from one my great aunt used back in England. You take the cabbage and you... You... Which spell did you use? Sir? With the broom, which spell? Well... I didn't really get very far. I said, Flieger, Flieger, in Basin, but it didn't work. In order to animate a broom, you Anglo-Saxon halfwit, you must summon the spirit of the tree from which it is made. The process is clearly explained in Volume 1, Chapter 9 of a book I have asked you many times to read. It is highly advanced magic, far beyond your primitive capabilities. Well, you appear to have done no actual harm. Let us be thankful for that. Yes, sir. You will have done something, though, if you attempted to use the seal. I wonder what it was. Fourteen stone. Stay here and mind the shop, Peter. Stay here? Oh, oh thank you, sir. Hand me my cloak. You will behave impeccably. Is that understood? This is your last chance. If on my return I find a frog's toe out of place, I will throw you into the river. My wand of Arbor Vitae, quickly. Yes, sir. You will look after Frida and see she has all she wants. Yes, sir. Where is she, by the way? Frida? Liebchen? I'm up the chimney, Papa. Up the chimney? What is she doing there? Go and see. I'm late. Oh, my crystal ball. Impeccably, you hear? As you have the broom out, you may as well sweep the floor. I shall be back at midnight. Change the setting of the clock. Yes, sir. And feed Copernicus. Feed Copernicus. Change the clock. Sweep the floor. Boil your head, you dried up old prune. What's wrong with my pyjamas anyway? Hello, Puss. No chance of going to the Strokop annual Christmas frenzy, then. Look after Frida. Of all the ways to spend Christmas Eve. I'm up the chimney, Papa. Little girls are a pain. They should all be drowned at birth. Oh, oui. Copernicus. I'd appreciate you not wiping your nose on my leg. I suppose you want feeding. That's all you do, eat and sleep. You must be the most useless cat in the universe. I know. What can we palm off on you for supper today? That should be good for a laugh. What have we got? I'd offer you some newt's eyes, but we're out. A fillet of fenny snake, a howlet's wing, shark's gizzard, or we've got some baboon's blood. Only four groats a bottle. Just herrings, as usual, please. Sorry? Herrings. And make sure the bowl's clean. Herrings? Pickled. 
for my supper and a bit less of the abuse poetry. My ancestors were learning the Torah while yours were running about in bearskins, so a little respect wouldn't go amiss. You spoke? You can talk? Is that so bad? You never spoke before. I'm a cat. You want I should sing too? But why are you talking now? You're asking me. You're the one who used the seal of Solomon. Oh, gosh. Oh, you mean... Oh, oh, that's amazing. I had no idea. That seal must be really powerful. The hexamaster said I would have done something, but he didn't know what. That's Lemire. He knows nothing. He's a quack. Some dreck in fancy glass bottles and a speaking clock. This he calls magic? Uh, him I don't talk to. Oh, crumbs. Are you saying he's no good? In my family, to be a magus meant something. Moses, Solomon, they were great men. They knew their craft. Moses and Solomon? Wow. High warlock for the conjuration of wizards he wants to be. <laughs> it's a miracle he's on the committee. This is weird. I suppose when I think about it, I've never really seen the Hexenmeister do much magic. Or any at all, in fact. I mean, we sell a lot of love potions and charms against gumboils and stuff. Oh, but what you might call actual magic, like flying carpets and all, I thought perhaps we'd get onto it next year. Why do you stay with him then if he's so useless? Look, it's a living. I don't complain. My uncle Kepler, may he rest in peace, once said, Life is like a crumpet, low on flavour and full of holes. I hate to mention it, but could I have that herring now? Oh, yes, sorry. Here you are. I have low blood sugar. If I don't eat every two hours, I get agitated. Excuse me. Gosh, cats can talk. Maybe brooms can fly. Maybe I can get to the frenzy after all. And be back before the Hexenmeister. Says I can pretend nothing happened. Do you do magic, Copernicus? Hmm? You must do with a family tree like yours. Can you do plagues of locusts and stuff like that? Plagues of locusts? Are you crazy? Oh, and there were other plagues, weren't there? Frogs and hail and foot and mouth. I think it was foot and mouth. Wasn't that what Solomon did? <laughs> this they call education. <laughs> what did he do then? What did he do? He didn't do plagues. Moses did plagues. King Solomon, the wise, the mighty blessings upon his memory, did other things. Spirit summoning was one of them, and he was the best. Believe me. Spirit summoning? Well, it's a family line, you might say. We've all done a little. A genie here, a flippity gibbet there. Now, if you'll excuse me, I really should eat something. That's what I have to do. Summon the spirit of the tree that the broom's made from. Excuse me? The hexamizer said it was all in that book. On the top shelf. The one in the black leather binding. Uh, you'll know what to do. You can help me. Hey, 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 what's what you're doing on that leather? Have you been leather trained? Don't you know you should always... <laughs> At the third strip, the time will be 7.54 precisely. That's sort of the clock out anyway. Look at the mess you've made. Look at the mess you're in. There's powdered sharks gizzard all over your hair. Oh, is there? Oh, yeah. And what's that on your face? If it's baboon's blood, I'm going. Um, no, it's cochineal. The food coloring, you mean? The one made from the bodies of crushed wood lice? Yeah, we use it in the love potions. Well, young man, you can't go out to any parties in their state. You look like Attila the Hunt. And you know, I think you should clear all this up before the man gets back. Ugh! There's a frog's toe in my herring. Could you maybe get me some fresh? Yes, hang on. Where's that book? Here we are. Hey. Volume one. Chapter 9, he said. 
Geister and Gespenster. What does that mean? Ghosts and spirits. You want to read it now? <laughs> no. How else will you learn? This man looks like he's doing something scary here in the picture. Or perhaps he always looks that green. He's casting a circle. You want to call up spirits? That's what you do. And what's he writing inside the circle? It looks like noughts and crosses. They're runes. Don't you know what runes are? Uh... Runes are mystical symbols. They have power. The three runes written in this circle are very famous. They're taken from Solomon's own grimoire. I cannot believe you don't know this stuff. So, in, in order to summon a spirit, mm -hmm. you have to draw a circle on the ground. Cast a circle. Oh, cast a circle. With what? Would chalk do? Chalk, yes. But it must be nine feet across. And you have to write these three runes in the centre. Write the runes, and then you put the object you want to bewitch into the circle. Oh. All the things are best. Things with a bit of a past. And you stand inside and recite the appropriate incantation. The example given here is a good all-purpose summoning spell. Ah. Uh, com, com, dualta, handshoe. Did you want to animate a glove? No, a broom. Say broom, then. Come, come, do alter person. Oh, and then it'll work. No. Without the seal of Solomon, nothing will work. So I need the circle, the runes, the broom... The spell and the seal, the whole schmear. Oy, 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 I should eat something. Oh, fantastic. Let's get started. What do you mean? What are you doing? I'm going to have a bath. Now, where's the person? Fortunatus. You're having a bath? What bath? <sighs> This bath, the old tin bath we keep flowers of sulphur in. I'll just tip them out. <laughs> Careful. That's just a fungicide. And here's the purse of Fortunatus, all mixed up with my game of Charlemagne. Oh, well. Now then. What are you doing with the seal of Solomon? Put it back. Take it off. Don't you know you mustn't touch it? Ay, ay, ay. It's like this, Copernicus. I need to get washed, tidy up, and get to the frenzy and back all in about four hours. Ay. I'll never do it, so this broom's going to do all the work and then turn into my transport for the night. It's so simple and ingenious, I can hardly believe I thought of it. Yeah. Now then, a chalk circle nine feet across. Can I just get to that ruler? Listen, boy, chick, this is a bad idea. If, God forbid, it shouldn't go well, you're drawing it the wrong way. Not vidicins, clockwise. Clockwise. Ay, 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 have we got trouble? What do these runes mean? Actually, never mind, I won't remember. What are you, a lunatic? Spirits are dangerous. You need the wisdom of Solomon to keep them in order. And even he didn't always manage it. Oh, holy one, it wasn't me. If I'd known what he meant, I'd never have opened my mouth. Uh, Put the broom and me in the middle. Right, I'm ready to begin. I have such a bad feeling about this. Come, come, do out a basin. Bist schon lange connect gewesen. Nun er fuller meine villain. Fill the bath, broom. Fill the bath. Das bart villain. Quickly, schnell. it didn't understand me. You've had a lucky escape, young man. Put the seal back and wipe those chalk marks off the floor. Yeah, I suppose so. Wait! What? Oh, yeah. Don't, don't, don't do that. It moved. The broom. The broom moved. Oh, yeah. Fog of it, smoke and what's it say? Fog, wood smoke. Among the wood smoke of a December afternoon, a breath of fog in a multifoliate pine has become substantial and founds the actual and the fact. God preserve us. It rubs its muzzle against the forest air, transmits intimate velleities in the environment. Exactly. Shadows. Whose spirit did you summon? I must use my 
newfound arms. Flex my taut, sapient muscles. Walk on my new, dry, prickly legs, my bifurcated bristles. I must do the job I was asked to do in the way I was asked to do it. I shall go as I am, just as I am, without preamble. I shall fall Why off. is it walking off with those buckets? I must be but so careful. I asked it to fill the bath. So it must be going up to the pump in the street to get the water. Gosh, this is cool. Uh, I hope you're satisfied, young man. There's a broom on the loose, spouting blank verse, and the shop floor looks like Armageddon. Can I ask how you intend putting all this to rights? Oh, no, Frida. What's she doing up the chimney? Oh, how on earth would I know? That child's completely balmy. No, I will not. Oh, she climbed up there. She can jolly well stay there. I'll tell Papa. Oh, chamber pots. I'll wait here. Shall I? Stuck up the chimney. Perhaps I could just light a fire under her. Frida. <laughs> oh, you numbskull. I am not. Just push. And push. Look, I'll say one, two, three, and then I want you to push down as hard as you can, all right? This is fun. One, two, three, push! Oh, oh Peter, that was so funny. I thought I'd never get out. Why were you up there in the first place? I was looking for fairies. Up the chimney? Why not? Father Christmas comes down the chimney. Yes, but he doesn't wear a white tutu, does he? <gasps> Do you like it? Papa gave it to me for my birthday. What is it with you and chimneys? Only yesterday I had to pull you out of the one next door, tugging at your legs while we had a shop full of customers. They must have thought I was bonkers. I was putting mop to bed. Mop? Mop. My little white mop with a red handle. She always sleeps in the shop chimney. Yes, well, you could do with the mop right now. You're filthy. So are you. You're covered in soot. The only reason I'm covered in soot is... Look, just go and get changed. And you've got baboons blood all over your face. It's cochineal! I don't know why you're so grumpy. It's Christmas Eve. I know. I'll do a show to cheer you up. You will not. I'm playing the lead in my show at school. It's called Rabbits and Hedgehogs Christmas Adventure. Oh. And I've learned all my lines. And my favourite bit's when I knock on the door like this. And I say, please, Hedgehog, open up the door. It's me. And Hedgehog's very cross. And he says, why have you woken me up in the middle of the night? And they think it's a haunted house. <laughs> Frida, shut up. I'm such a little chatterbox, aren't I? Sit down, please. No, because I'm not going to sit here. I'll and... tell Papa. All right, get on with it. Oh, what's this? You just sat on my gazelle dome. Oh, great. I was going to make cakes with it. Honestly, Peter, you are useless. I'm useless? The apprentice before you was never so clumsy. Frida called me useless. I thought I'd turned into a mirror. Andy was much better at magic. Where is he then if he was so wonderful? He qualified. He was gold medalist for his year. I didn't like him, though. He was always trying to give me mouth to mouth. He what? Mouth to mouth. That's what he called it. He said he had to practice for his first aid. He sounds like a complete nutter. Frida, you didn't let him, did you? Of course not. I just bit him on the nose. Oh, skill. Very hard. That's how Papa found out. He left after that. Good. Anyway, now for my show. Actually, I won't do Rabbit and Hedgehog. I'll do the story of Noah. I like that one. We did it last year. I was Mrs. Noah and Wolfgang Trockenschleuder was Noah. Only he had to drop out because of his colon. This won't take long, will it? Because I really should... Ladies get... and gentlemen, welcome to the show of Noah's Ark. Before we start, please take note of the fire exits. There'll be one interval of 15 minutes when refreshments will be available from the vestry. Thank you. Oh. Long, long ago, as the sun shone brightly in the brilliant blue sky. Actually, g 
Can I make up my own show? Oh, for crying out loud. Would you like me to cut it to tell your friends? No. Or I could sing a song. Frere Jacques. Look, I have to go, all right. I'm going. I'll tell Papa. What, that I wouldn't listen to you singing? That you're wearing the seal of Solomon round your neck. That's his special seal, isn't it? Frida, I am within punching distance. Shall I beat the living daylights out of you? <laughs> oh, Peter, you are funny. All right, Noah's Ark, then. Actually, I like that story. It's very exciting when all the rain comes down. I like it when it rains, don't you? Especially thunderstorms. Sometimes I think the whole world's going to overflow and the house be floating along the river, all washed... Uh, gosh! That's clever. Did you do that? Did I do what? Make that water come under the door. What, what? Oh, galoshes. Oh, what's going on? Wait for me! Fish splash, this is just flush. Oh, Copernicus! At the third stroke, the time oh, to Copernicus! the Hexen Meister's return will be 30 minutes and 20 seconds. Oh, who's messing with the clock? I just got it back to take me. Hang on. 30 minutes? He said he'd be home at midnight. Goodness me, it's wet in here. Has somebody had a little accident? Yeah, Frida, hush a minute, I'm trying to think. That bath isn't for me, is it? I hate bath. The broom, where's the broom? Don't be silly, Peter. If you don't want a broom, you want a mop. Actually, why did I get mop? She's in the chimney. Mop! Time to get up. Now, it's only the shop floor that's flooded. Oh, well, the shop floor and the rear passage, and presumably the still room by now, but basically I could have this under control if I only... Oh! Frida, come away from the fireplace. She'll do nothing, Frida. Frida, I forbid you to climb up that chimney. I won't be long. Oh, Frida! Oh, do what you like. You're off your head anyway. Copernicus! All right, already. You think I'm deaf? Oh, where have you been? Having my supper. Your supper? You mean you've been eating here when all this mess is about? I know. It nearly turned my stomach. I was having a fourth herring when a box of gazelle dung floated past my nose. Ah, this he calls magic. Where's the broom? Around and about. That broom isn't going to the pump, by the way. It's going across the street to the river. To the river? Sure. That's why there's so much water. It's filling both buckets at once. But all I did was ask it to fill the bath. Ah, ah, but you didn't tell it to stop when the bath was full. That's what I meant about spirits. I'll tell it now, then. Broom, stop now! I command you to stop! No, that won't work. You have to cast a spell to counteract the first spell. Fine, what do I do? Oh, I, I, I'd need to look at the book. All right, where's the book? That I couldn't say. Not a sequoia. On the counter, maybe? The counter? All right, you just stay perched on that barrel. I've got it. You know, the way I look at it, it's bad. But it could be worse. The Macher will be home soon. Let him sort it out. Here it is. What does it say? Uh, no, no, no. This book's no good. We need volume two. Volume two? Uh-huh. Volume two's probably under a foot of water, Copernicus. Does it say anything else? Uh, there's a list of stop commands. What, what these? Yes, but I wouldn't have thought you could just shout them out. The Fleason! The fungus rusts beneath the bath. The Fleason! The theocratic finger mark. The Gleden! Oh, 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 that up. The Lagan! It's so verdant. The Fallon! The Fleischen! No, 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 no. You see, you need a spell. Right. That's it. There's only one option left. What are you doing? Hey, be careful with that axe. It's dangerous. You could hurt someone. Excuse me, Brew. You won't stop it that way. Put the axe down. Put it down. I'm sorry, Broom. There. Straight through the middle. You shouldn't have done that. 
I've stopped here, haven't I? I wouldn't be so sure. It reminds me of what happened to my grandmother. May she rest in peace. She'd done the same sort of spell. What, with a broom? No, the frying pan. It wouldn't stop making latkes. What was that? I don't know. What do you think you heard? I don't know. Mon A voice, maybe? Mon frere. Oh, gosh. Oh, what is this happening? Oh, no. How have I made division of myself? An apple cleft in two is not more twin than we two One broomsticks. is genius to the other. And so, which is the natural broom and which the copy? An, An apple, apple cleft in two is, is not more twin than we two, two broomsticks. Looks like you just got two brooms for the price of one. Oh, Bottoms! Copernicus, help! What am I going to do? You're asking me? <laughs> Stop! 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 Oh, what are you doing? Give us a Stop! Stop! Have you gone crazy? Hey, hey, hey! Go, go! We are the wooden men. We are the gnarled, fleshless men. There is only the bath and filling the bath. We are the wooden men. We are the gnarled, fleshless men. There is only the bath and filling the bath. Filling the bath. Filling the bath. Filling the hard, round, hard, over the bath. The bath, unchecked. The bath, in the bath. The bath, here in the trees. Here are the water scales, the water line will lie in the thin light section where the water line meets the wall. Drop, drip, drop, drip, drop, 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 drop. All right, Copernicus. I've made a complete hash of that. Can you think of anything? Solomon always said, when magic fails, use your loaf. As I see it, we have around 300 rooms now. And they're all intent on filling the bar. Each broom has two buckets. Each bucket holds five gallons. So, in the next few minutes, after they've all made two or three journeys to the river, they'll be coming up for another 10,000 gallons of water in here. <sighs> and the shop is situated below street level. And the water's already past your knees. And they're coming back now. Oh, no. Stop. Stop! It's a lesson! It's a lesson! It's a root! It's a Right, let's get out! Oh, what's that floating? Looks like a lump of clay and a cabbage to me. Now I'm gonna carry you. Up the steps? With all those brooms coming down? It's the only way. The stairs to the upper floor are locked. The steel room windows are too high, and I don't exactly fancy my chances climbing up the ch Oh, galoshes. Oh, no! Oh, that child is such a nuisance. Are you going? Of course I'm going. I can hardly leave her there, can I? I don't know. You're the one who said she should be drowned at birth. Yes. Well, I seem to have been wrong about pretty much everything today, so I'll just add that to the list. I'm coming, Frida. Start swimming, Copernicus. Mm -hmm. If you get into trouble, sing out. What would you suggest? Send in the clothes? Swim, he says. I don't swim. I'm a cat. Could I just climb a cupboard or something? And when it's up to the ceiling, what then? No. It's swim or nothing. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> I hit something. What did I hit? <laughs> Wouldn't you know it? Oh, head up, Copernicus. As Uncle Edison would have said, be a mensch. After all, how deep can it be? It's only rising at the rate of... The time to collapse before All right, Frida. One, two, three, push. I'll pull then. <laughs> What's wrong? My arm's caught. Oh, what do you mean? I must have turned in a funny way. Oh. Why are my feet wet all of a sudden? Oh, Frida, can you move your arm at all? Not really. Ow! Get me out, Frida! All right, Frida. Now, perhaps 
if we just ease you up a bit? Push down on my hands with your feet. Where are your hands? Uh, don't move your legs around, you'll end up kicking me in the teeth. Oh! Oh! Peter! Peter, where are you? Oh, hold on, just... Not with a bag. Not to worry. She'll try not again. Not with a bag. Get me out! Get me out! She's trying not to be kicking me, Frida. Oh! Oh! Help me! Help me! Oh! Oh! Just push me down! Oh! Help! 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 Lisa! Don't run! What's happened? Help! Help! I'm up the chimney! Oh, Frida! Leave them! It's all my fault, sir. Please help us. What did you do? Help! Peter, I need to know what you did. Help! Did you use the scene? Yes, sir. I'm sorry. I'm drown. In the ecke, Besen, Besen, seid's gewesen, denn als Geister ruft euch nur zu seinem Zwecke. Est hervor der alte Meister! Good evening, Peter. Your charm to eliminate chaos from my life needs more research. Yes, sir. Woo! Oh. oh, Papa, that was horrid. Uh, what's exactly happened, Liebchen? Well, I don't really know. There was a lot of water about, so I said I'd get mopped from the chimney, and I got stuck because my elbow was sort of wedged in a gap in the bricks, and then the water started coming up the chimney. I see. It was Peter's fault, I expect. It usually is. Yes. He did try to help, though. He told me to push down on his hands with my feet. And I was trying to find his hands with my feet. But I couldn't find them. Gosh, Peter, you are a mess. Oh. You've got even more cochineal on your face than before. Have I? And just look at your eye. Honestly. How did you let you go, Papa? Uh, not very well, I'm afraid. I had intended to give a demonstration of automatic writing, but I was unable to achieve the correct state of ecstasy. I found instead I was writing abusive remarks about the members of the conjuration, which did not see its way to nominating me for the office of High Warlock. Oh. Yes, well, in consequence, I came home early. Now, Frida, suppose you go and get ready for bed. And hang up your stocking, and I will come and say good night. My stocking? Mm. I quite forgot. It's nearly Christmas. See you in a minute, Papa. Good night, Peter. Good night. Well? I'm very sorry, sir. Are you going to throw me into the river? In view of the fact most of it ended up in the shop, it seems a little redundant. I must think of something else. Here's the seal of Solomon, sir. It's no use to me now. There is only one way to reverse a disaster of the scale you conjured up. I had to negate the seal altogether. Once its power was stopped, everything you invoked with it stopped. So it doesn't work anymore? No. Put it in the box with the other lucky charms. Some blockhead will buy it for Christmas. Oh, so that's why everything looks just as it did before I cast the spell. No damp or anything. Gosh, that's incredible. Sir, you must be a truly amazing sorcerer. Oh, Copernicus said mm -hmm. that you... Well, that is... Copernicus I... said? I, well... What did you say, Copernicus? Hmm? Well, hmm. nothing, evidently. Sir, I know I've been a complete cretin and nearly got your daughter drowned and all, but mayn't I have one more chance? 
I promise this time I really would work hard. I'm sorry about tonight, sir. It won't happen again. It won't happen again? Uh, did I hear you correctly? No. If I turn you into a punnet of raspberries and bottle you, it will not happen again. If I plug the gaps in the chimney wall with you, I will be safe from a repeat performance. You break every rule I have ever given you. Cause 20,000 gallons of water to divert into my shop. Come within a whisker of destroying my entire livelihood. And you have the audacity to say it won't happen again. I'm sorry. Well, in fact, in a way, it was fortunate. After what happened at the meeting, the conjuration more or less accused me of being a fraud. I was beginning to think I was myself. But thanks to your imbecility tonight, I have once more performed a piece of real magic. My most powerful to date, I think. Oh, who knows? Perhaps at next year's elections, I... Uh, well, it is... Evidently, time to start doing some serious sorcery again. You may as well stay and work yourself to the bone. Oh, thank you, sir. Oh, thank you so much. Perhaps you could show me how to make you another seal. Peter, you have no magical talent at all. Oh. But you have other gifts. The shop has need of them. Business has been very slack in recent months. No one wants gazelle dung ointment anymore. As I came home through the streets of Strokov tonight, I found myself agreeing with your assertion that we were losing a chance with regard to Christmas. Sir? There is a side to the season's festivities which I have overlooked side with commercial possibilities, which a business such as mine is uniquely well placed to exploit. Oh, definitely, sir. Yes. People are looking for a bit of magic at this time of year. They'll buy stuff they wouldn't normally touch with a barge pole. Precisely. So, would you care to demonstrate to me once more your glow-in-the-dark pajamas? Oh, yes, sir. <laughs> In The Sorcerer's Apprentice by Judith French, The Hexenmeister was played by Paul Rees, Peter by Zach Fox, and Copernicus by Harry Taub. Jenny Veal played Frida, Nicholas Bolton the Brooms, and Emily Wachter the Clock. Hebrew transliterations were by David Franklin, and the music was specially composed by David Pickvance. The Sorcerer's Apprentice was directed by Mark Beebe. And in this drama are tomorrow, Rumpole of the Bailey encounters Father Christmas and recounts some seasonal legal cases. Julian Reintat stars as John Mortimer's famous lawyer at the same time. In the land of Ingrid, where seven league boots and cloaks of invisibility really do exist, a tall black castle appeared one day. Robert Bathurst stars in Diane Wynne Jones's fantasy classic. I don't care for your competition. A tale of rival witches, wizards, and fire demons. Don't come near me like that. You're wet. With Julia McKenzie. Somehow I must get this spell undone. And Ewan Rayon. I have a sudden urge to tint my hair. Howl's Moving Castle on BBC Radio 4.